Hello friend, I'm Rich Stocks. This is Prayer School. We have a great lesson for you today. Stay there. I'll be right back. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of light. Shadow of turning or changing its mind. Hello, friend. I'm Rich Stocks from the Healthy Christian Broadcast. In 1997, I heard a cassette tape by Dr. Joel Wallach called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Dr. Wallach teaches that we all have the potential to live healthy lives well beyond the age of 100, and if you give your body what it needs, it will do amazing things. I want to invite you to join millions of people who've already heard Dr. Wallach's life-changing message. Now you can hear this message free of charge on our website at mineraldoctor.com. Here are three simple steps you can take right now to put you on the path to a longer, healthier life. Listen to Dr. Wallach's message, schedule your free health evaluation, schedule a free phone consultation. We have an experienced team of people standing by ready to help you with your health and well-being. Free wellness teaching, free health evaluation, free phone consultation, all found at mineraldoctor.com. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you reach your full healthy potential. Hello everyone. For many weeks we've been in a series called Prayer School mini sub-series. We looked at praying like Jesus prayed. We had a sub-series called Amazing Prayer Promises. We had a sub-series called Asking and Receiving. And now this is sort of a continuation of Asking and Receiving. I'm calling it Pray in Faith, Stay in Faith. And I am convinced that one of the primary reasons that prayers appear to be unanswered we addressed this last time. They're answered the moment you pray, if you prayed in faith. We've looked at that. Go back and watch the videos. When you pray in faith, God answers your prayer. With Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, it took three minutes for the answer to show up. But in Daniel chapter 10, it took three weeks, 21 days. But in both instances, the angel appeared to Daniel and said, the moment you began to pray, the command came. God answered Daniel's prayer. But there was variations in time. It had nothing to do with God's timing. It had to do with other things. The angel was coming with an answer, and one of those, he ran into some adversity. You might run into some adversity, my brother and sister. What are you going to do? And so let's review a few scriptures. We didn't get very far last. I mean, we did. We didn't get as far in my notes as I thought we would, but it doesn't matter. We believe we were on track with the Holy Spirit leading us. He is the master teacher. And we saw in Hebrews 6 verse 12, it says that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. How are you going to ask and receive? It's going to be through faith and patience. There's been a lot of teaching on faith, but not a lot of teaching on patience. What is patience? Patience is not just enduring. You could be enduring and you could be in unbelief the whole time. You could be putting up with the devil, putting up with sickness, putting up with all kinds of things that aren't the will of God, are not part of His plan, and just be full of unbelief. It says it's through faith and patience that you will inherit the promises. Brother Rich, that's talking about the promises after this life. This verse can be applied to anything. One interpretation, many applications. Don't ever forget that little, that little saying. One interpretation. A verse may have one interpretation. Well, it's talking about this. Yes, but the application there could be a hundred different applications. Because the Bible's full of principles. I said this a few weeks ago. It bears repeating. The Bible, to be in faith, you are either standing on a promise, a principle, or a finished work. The Bible is full. <laughs> my Bible here. This book is a book of promises. It is a book of principles. And it is a book of finished works. My faith 
for me to be in faith, oh, Brother Rich, I'm just trusting God. Well, let me ask you a question. What scripture or scriptures are you trusting in? I'm just trusting God. No, you're not. Yeah, you think you are. I hear it all the time. I hear good ministers, well-known ministers, and, and I understand what they mean, but it's still not accurate. Well, faith is just trusting God. Faith is not just trusting God unless you can tell me what that means. What do you mean you're trusting God? I've used this example many times. You might say, I trust Brother Rich. That's me. I trust him. You trust me to do what? Well, I just trust you. To do what? Do you trust me to come and mow your grass this summer? <laughs> I hope not. Because unless the Lord tells me to, and even if He does, I'm going to try to negotiate with Him and say, well, Lord, could I pay someone else to come and do it? Because I don't even mow my own grass. I'm not coming to mow your grass. Now, I'm not going to say I'll never do it, but I don't plan to ever mow another blade of grass as long as I live. You got to be careful saying what you will and won't do, but I'm not planning on it. And like I said, even if the Lord said, hey, you go mow your neighbor's grass, I'm going to say, Father, why can't I just pay my guys to go mow it? Negotiate with him. Isn't that what Abraham tried to do with Sodom and Gomorrah? Lord, you know, he's negotiating. Now, you can't always do that. But my point is, to, when you say, I'm trusting God... Unless you're trusting in something specific that God has said in His Word, not something you think He said, well, the Lord told me I was going to marry so-and-so. Oh, maybe you will, maybe you won't. Maybe they don't like you. Did you ever consider that? And maybe they never will. Oh, I just believe God will change their heart. No, He's not. He can't even make them love Him much less make them love you. I don't want to get on this again. I've spent a lot of time on this. But it gets me riled up, as you can see. People pray. They take that verse. Jesus said, you can ask the Father for anything, and they think anything means anyone. And that person has a free will. Okay? we got to keep moving here, guys. Hebrews 6, 12, it's through faith and patience you inherit the promises. And then we saw in Hebrews 10, verse 35 and 36, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. One of the main reasons that people, they'll pray the prayer of faith, but as I said last time, Brother Hagin used to say, Brother Kenneth Hagin, you got to keep the switch of faith turned on. That is your connection. Your connection with God is His Word. That is your faith connection. You are trusting in God by trusting in something specific. Abraham... Man, I'm getting way ahead of myself. But when God called him the father of many nations, his quiver was empty. It means he didn't have any children. But he had to change his name and go around introducing himself for 25 years as the father of many nations before the promise showed up. Well, you got to call things that be not as though they are. We'll have a lesson on that. But so many people cast away their confidence. Hebrews chapter 10, we're reading that. It says, Don't cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience. That's not endurance. It's constancy, consistency. You have the need to be consistent that after you've done the will of God, we could say this, that after you've prayed the will of God, after you've prayed the will of God, and after if there's anything He's told you to do in addition to that that you've done, then you'll receive the promise how if, if, if you stay steadfast. Steadfast and unmovable. The easy version says continue to be strong in your thoughts. The World English Version says do not stop believing God now. Your faith will bring you much reward. So what is patience? Patience is constancy and consistency. Then we saw in James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally. When does God give you wisdom? The moment you ask. It says, and God doesn't find fault when you ask. He upbraids not. It says, it shall be given him. When wisdom is given, the moment you ask, it's given. 
It says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Well, nobody, I can't say nobody, if you're coming to God and you're planning to ask for something in faith, you're probably not going to waver in the first five minutes or maybe in the first 24 hours. The Lord revealed to me this week, wavering doesn't occur when you pray. It typically, we'll say typically, it typically does not occur when you pray. Wavering occurs after you pray. After you pray. If every prayer, if you saw the answer, again, I got to keep, I got to watch how I say this, because God answers your prayer the moment you pray. The moment you pray in faith, God grants it. It's done. His part is done. But you receiving it means you have to stay in that place of faith, that place of expectancy, that place where you are ready to receive until you have it in your hands, until you see it with your eyes, until you hear it with your ears, until you're driving it down the road, until you're walking down the aisle with it. So maybe you get that later. You stay in faith. After you pray in faith, that's this sub-series, pray in faith, stay in faith. Until you have it. Believe you receive it when you pray. Stay in faith until you have it. It says here in James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8, it says that when you ask in faith, nothing wavering. The wavering comes later. For he that wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Did you notice the word anything? You want to know how not to receive anything from God? Just after you pray in faith, don't stay in faith. You want to know how to short circuit any prayer that you prayed? Just get out of faith after you pray. And now I know, I told you a well-known minister, I heard him teach <clears throat> one night and spent an hour or more, hour and a half talking about, we don't have a faith problem, we have an unbelief problem. That's ridiculous. And I know it's ridiculous because when I got in my car that night, I'm asking the Lord the whole time, I'm like, Father, I, I know this man's a good teacher and I know he's, he's been teaching a lot longer than me. I just know what he taught's not right. I know it's not right, and I'm asking you, show me, give me an example. When I got in the car, it was very cold that night. And when I got in the car, and it's very cold, I turned the heater on, and immediately the Lord used that example, because I'm asking Him as I'm doing I'm saying, Father, I, you, you got to tell me more about this. I know that's not right. We don't have a faith problem. We have an unbelief problem. That is not right. And as I'm turning the heat on, the Lord said, it's exactly like that. That car was cold, but as I turned the heat on, as the heat began to rise... Guess what happened to the cold? It disappeared. When faith increases, doubt and unbelief decrease. It's like when you were back in elementary school, the teeter-totter, we called them. I hated those things. Uh, all the bullies, you know, get you on there and then boom, they jump off. Bam, let you drop to the ground. I, I don't like bullies to this day. I didn't get bullied a lot. You know, and certainly as I got older, I didn't. I was a little young for my age, you know, for my grade level in school, maybe, you know, almost a year younger, not quite. Just how your birthdays fall, all right? It didn't be mean I, didn't mean I was dumb. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea. I heard a well-known minister talking one time how one of the teachers called him stupid, actually called him. He said, if there's one thing I'm not, it's stupid. God had set him free and realized I am not stupid. But anyway, the old teeter-totter. When one side goes up, the other goes down. You can't say we don't have a faith problem, we have an unbelief problem, because they work just like that, like the teeter-totter. When I turned that heater on in that car that night, the heat immediately began to rise and the cold immediately began to disappear. And we're going to look at a great example of this, but I, I got to try to get through some of my notes here today, guys. 
It says, he that wavers, we're in James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8, he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. It says, let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So what is wavering? It's instability. What is wavering? Being tossed around by the circumstances. What is wavering? Wavering is hesitating. Wavering is doubting. Waving, wavering is being double-minded. Wavering is the opposite of patience because patience is constancy, consistency. Wavering is the exact opposite of being patient. How are you going to receive every promise of God? Through faith and patience, through faith and consistency. You're not waiting for God to do it. God answered your prayer when you prayed. But you are staying steadfast. We said last time, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, I believe, steadfast unmovable. Yes, that verse goes on to say always abounding in the work of the Lord. Well, today we're not talking about necessarily the work of the Lord, but praying to the Lord. That after you pray in faith, you stay in faith and you refuse to waver. Right? You be steadfast and unmovable. What is the opposite? That, yes, Lord, I'll say that. That, my friend, is a picture of being patient. What is patient? Being steadfast and unmovable. You want a Bible definition where another scripture defines patience. That's it. Be steadfast, unmovable. That is the best definition of patience you're going to find in the Bible. Where another scripture actually defines what patience is. Constancy. Consistency. Being steadfast and unmovable. Refusing to waver. It says here, if you waver, we're back in James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. If you waver, you will not receive anything from the Lord if you waver. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So you, to receive from God, it takes patience, which is stability, which is steadfastness, which is constancy and consistency. Wavering does not occur when you pray. Wavering occurs after you pray while you are waiting for the answer to show up. Not waiting for God to answer. Not waiting for God's timing. Not waiting where I know the Lord's going to heal me. No, He's not. You're going to die. If you believe that, and you have a, a deadly disease, it's going to kill you. As people die every day because they believe God's going to heal them. You believe you receive when you pray. It says you shall have it, but we could put all these other scriptures. You're going to have it if you remain steadfast in the faith. If you refuse to waver. If you refuse to doubt. Now here's a great example of this. There is not one better in the Bible that I'm aware of than the one I'm getting ready to share. Simon Peter. One of my favorite characters in the Bible. I'm looking forward. I don't know about you. I'm looking forward to meeting many of these people in heaven. Now, I had a friend recently. Eh, it wasn't recently, over a year ago. He wanted me to teach on prosperity, and I was teaching on health and healing. I said, I'll get to it eventually. Well, when I started teaching on prosperity, he didn't like it. He didn't like what I had to say. Well, not everybody does. But my question is, who is it? What scripture is it? What scripture is it that, I, that I'm teaching or that I read that you don't like? What scripture is it that you have more revelation on than what I do. People, I quit reading all the stuff on Facebook, stuff people say about my teaching and on YouTube and all of that. I don't have time because hardly any of the people that took the time to criticize gave me a wizit. What's wizit? What scripture is that? W-S-I-T. Wizit. What scripture is that? What? They didn't have any. If I pile up a half a dozen or a dozen scriptures and you say, well, I don't believe that. I'm, okay. I'm sorry to hear that, but there's not much else I can do besides pile the scriptures up for you. <laughs> you start piling yours up and let's compare our piles. I'm in the vitamin business. I say it doesn't take any of my time anymore, but I have a vitamin business, we could say, distribute nutritional products for 27 years or so now, and the owner of the company, we used to get together and we put all of our pills for that meal, meal you know, we put them in one bottle. 
I used to embarrass my kids really bad. And so we'll just pour them out on a napkin or in a plate, you know, at a restaurant. Here's this big pile, and they think you're a dope peddler or something. And <laughs> he and I used to compare our pile of pills, and he'd get looking, hey, where's such and such? I said, it's there, you know, and he'd get poking around looking through. He knew what certain ones looked like, and he said, where's this one? Well, it's in there. It's in the pile. Well, let's do the same thing with the scriptures, my brother and sister. If I'm wrong about something, just pile your scriptures up. Send me an email, and I don't want to hear about what you believe or what you think or how this made you mad and all of that. I just want to see scriptures. Pile your scriptures up, and I'll pile mine up, and may the best pile win. <laughs> the person, may the person with the biggest pile of scriptures win. Not that the goal is to win a debate or lose, but I do want to know the truth. And if I'm wrong about something, I want to know. I, don't you? Isn't that what Jesus said? John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, if you continue in my word, then you'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. Well, if you continue in God's word about prayer, if you continue in God's word about praying in faith and then staying in faith, then you'll know the truth. And the truth will make you free. What does that mean? Then you will know how to receive from God. Then you will know the things that are keeping you from receiving from God. The problem, I would agree with this, what that man said. It's not a faith problem. The faith problem doesn't occur. First of all, I'm going to say it again. Faith and unbelief are counterparts. You can't say we don't have a faith problem, we have an unbelief problem. That is ridiculous because it's like cold and heat. When one goes up, the other goes down. If you have an unbelief problem, you have a faith problem. And I don't care what minister says it. Some of my favorite ministers teach us. If you have a, an unbelief problem, you have a faith problem. If you have a fear problem, you have a faith problem. If you have a wavering problem, if you have a doubt problem, you have a faith problem. These are all opponents of your faith. These are all enemies of your faith. I'm not teaching on faith per se right now. I'm teaching on prayer. But we receive through prayer by faith, but not just praying in faith. We have to stay in faith until the answer comes. Not until God answers, until the answer comes. Until it comes to pass. Until you have it. You wear it. You're driving it. You're touching it, you're seeing it, you're hearing it, you're smelling it, you're walking down the aisle with it. I say that, I just get a kick out of saying that. The people that are believing for spouses. Yeah, you can believe God for a spouse. Just not a certain one, that one or this one. They may not like you, but let's keep going. Here's a great example of someone who stepped out in faith. It wasn't necessarily a prayer but this makes it one of the best examples in the Bible. Let's look at Simon Peter. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 32. Immediately Jesus made His disciples get into a boat and go before Him to the other side while He sent the multitudes away. And when He sent the multitudes away, He went up on the mountain by Himself to pray. Now when the evening was come, He was there alone. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea. Tossed by the waves... For the wind was contrary. Notice that's what we read in the book of James, chapter 1, that wavering is like being a wave on the sea being tossed to and fro. This boat was being tossed by the waves. It says, being tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw Him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, come. I had a friend just this past week say to me, he said, you realize he didn't just say come to Peter. He didn't say come, come on Peter. He just said come. All 12 of them. Oh, I got goosebumps all over me now. Whew. All 12 of them could have stepped out. You would think all these people, they want to argue about, well, tongues, speaking in tongues isn't for everyone. It's for me, thank God. Well, healing, God's not God's will to heal everyone. It's His will to heal me. 
It's not God's will that everybody be rich. It's His will for me to be rich. They all could have stepped out of the boat. My wife sings a song. You can find it on uh, anywhere music. You download music called Are You Rockin' in the Boat? Instead of walking on the water. Are you rocking? Rocking, not rocking. Are you rocking in the boat? Instead of walking on the water. Peter at least stepped out of the boat. Jesus said, come and it could have applied to every one of them. i got to keep moving. So Jesus said, come, and when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw, notice this, when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. This is one of the best examples of wavering that I've ever seen. It says, in beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said, Peter, it's all right. You just did a great thing. No, no. Look at what your Jesus, the Jesus you love, the Jesus who's so kind and all of it. Look what your Jesus said to him. He said, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The man's walking on the water and Jesus said, your faith is teeny, tiny, too little. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So there you see that picture as, as doubt increased, faith decreased, they work as counterparts, you can't say you got a problem with one and not the other. Peter began to waver. When he began to waver, he began to sink. This is how people do in prayer. One of the main reasons prayers don't ever, the answer never appears. We're out of time. Can you believe that? Lord, give us more time in Jesus' name. I want to leave you with one of my favorite scriptures. God desires above everything, my brother and sister, that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Hello friend, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our Healthy Christian YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos, it's free to subscribe. If you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new video. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites for our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com for weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week we hear from people and they're hungry for the Word of God and this is made possible through people just like you. The Bible teaches that we are to sow into the ministries that we receive from. So if you're receiving from this ministry, I want to invite you to become one of my partners. We have a video on our website called Becoming a Business Partner with God. The web address is richstocks.org. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org. Good and good.